So hi everyone and welcome to this uh, short video on the types of data and variables that we typically encounter in uh, applied econometrics. So we're going to go first on the three most common types of data uh, structures that we have in applied econometrics and then we're going to discuss a couple of types of variables which we need to be concerned with. So um, let's start first with the most basic type which will uh, revolve basically uh, the first module of the term will, will revolve men, uh, mainly on this type of data which is a cross-sectional data set. So a cross-sectional data set is essentially a data set wherein you have uh, multiple units uh, or cross-sectional units to be more specific and you could regard this maybe they could be firms, they could be people, they could be countries, they could be regions, uh, etc. So there are multiple regions for a given time period. So for example, in the data set that we have to the right, we have multiple countries, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand, but we only have them for one time period, that's 2012, and they have values for each of those. So for a cross-sectional data set, we uh, effectively call each observation x sub i, right? Uh, a specific variable x sub i, wherein uh, the variable varies in value across observations. So you have the same year, but Philippines has this entry. So this is, say, x1. For the same year, Malaysia has a different value. That's x2. This is x3, x4, and so on, right? So that's an example. Uh, other textbooks may denote this as, say, X, I, T, right, wherein the T is fixed. So the time dimension is relatively fixed. Okay, now moving forward, okay, this is an example of a cross-sectional data set. So if you look at the data set here, uh, we only have this data set for one time period. You can find this data set on worldometers, right, uh, if you go there. And uh, as of time of recording, uh, the, the world is under a global pandemic. So uh, we see that here, the cases are here. Uh, so you have total number of cases and you have multiple observations or multiple countries here. So you have US, India, Brazil, Russia, UK, France, et cetera. And you have each here variables representing different various data points. So this is an example of a cross-sectional data set. So that's the first type of data. The second type of data is a time series data set. And it's essentially the most common uh, if you try and ask a person, okay, how do you think data looks like? Generally, a lot of them would think of time series data. So it's basically multiple time periods for one entity or cross section. So in here, for example, you have the Philippines, which is one entry or cross section. Then uh, this is actually month, not year. So we have here uh, multiple uh, time periods. You have here for February, for January, for December, for November, and the Philippines has a data point for each of those. So it doesn't vary through cross sections because we just have the Philippines here. It just varies through time. So we denote that as XT because it now varies through time. So this is X1, X2, X3, and so on, right? So in other textbooks, it may be XIT, wherein the I part is fixed because the, um, the, it doesn't change uh, through space because, again, we only have one space variable there. Okay. Now, a key concept in time series is the frequency. And the frequency is essentially how often the data gets reported. So when we have a quarterly frequency, it gets reported four times a year because there are four quarters in a year. If it's annual, it's only one data point a year. Semi-annual means two data points a year. Monthly means 12 data points in a year. Daily means 365 day, uh, data points in a year. And of course, you have you can even have by second or by hour or um, by, by some sort of amalgamation from that. So uh, time series data, uh, data sets have a frequency and so does the next uh, data set that we have. So for example, this is how a typical time series would look like. So we have it as daily new cases. So how many new COVID cases there are in a particular state, in this case for the Philippines. So we have daily new cases as a time series. You have your multiple time periods, but then it's just one entity, which is the Philippines. Okay, so that's a time series data. The last type of data which we'll discuss is a panel data. And typically, um, it's uh, where we have multiple time periods for multiple cross sections. So for example, here, we have both Philippines and Thailand. So that's more than one. And we have data points on them on months, right, months, 
on uh, various months, so more than one month. Okay, so it's like a cross section plus a time series. You get a panel data set, and now you have X I T, right? Because they both vary through time and through space. So, for example, four point seven is say X one one. Let the Philippines be one, Thailand be one. This be time period one. Uh, this is two, three, and then four. This one is like X to one, so month two for the Philippines. This is month three for the Philippines. For example, this one would be month uh, two for um, Thailand, which is X to two. So that's how a panel data set looks like. And we have specialized models for panel data, such as um, the fix and the random effects. And we have special types of models for time series uh, data sets as well such as the Arimas, the Sarima, the VARs, etc. Then, of course, we have our basic regression models that fit into cross-sectional data and some more advanced ones dealing with survey data. So those are the general types of data that we will encounter in econometrics. Now, what are the typical variables we're going to encounter? Well, we have uh, a dependent, of course, and an independent variable, and we need those things to understand the basic regression equation. So, as you will see further into the course, we formulate a basic regression model as maybe something looking like this, right? So typically, x is your independent variable, which you'd like to see how that variable is related to y or how much it explains y of y being your dependent variable, right? And you do that through the use of econometrics and you want to test that out empirically and make sure that your results are okay. And uh, that's the purpose of a regression to see which uh, variables have a relationship and which do not. And we formulate it such that on one side we have the dependent variable and on another side we have independent variables, uh, things that cannot be influenced by uh, the dependent variable. So uh, here are some synonyms for the word dependent and independent. So typically textbooks tend to go uh, off and on from, this, uh, from these uh, definitions. So they tend to uh, use them interchangeably. So just a point there. Another type that we should consider is a discrete versus a continuous variable. So a discrete variable is one where uh, values that can be counted by using mere positive integers. So for example, the number of children and the number of cars. There's no such thing as 0.5 a car or 0.5 a child. There's only whole numbers associated with these things. So that's an example of a discrete variable. A continuous variable is a variable where in, in principle, it can take any value between a particular interval on the real line, right? So for example, a common example is the interest rate. So uh, an interest rate, rate could be 2.05%. It could be 2.053957%. So it can stretch along that uh, entire interval and uh, it's a quantitative variable. And since it can take any value inside of that interval, it's a continuous variable. It's not like a discrete that has to be a whole number. Uh, it cannot have a decimal in there. So a continuous can have that. Now, in practice, you may observe that, uh, especially in applied econometrics, that continuous variables take often only discrete values because of the peculiarities in measurement. Let me give an example. Say, for example, you want to report GDP of a country. Well, GDP is some continuous thing in reality because you add up the total expenditures or the total incomes of the various sectors, and you're going to come up with quite a big number and uh, quite a, let, let's say, crude number. So it's like 1 trillion, 485 billion, 700 something thousand, uh, million, and so on. So what we typically do is to make it easy to report, especially in data sets, we, we express it maybe in terms of thousands and we round up the measurement to some whole number. So that's, uh, that's an example of a peculiarity of measurement because we'd like to easily report certain data points. Another one is a quantitative versus a qualitative variable. So variables uh, that are measured in numerical quantities like discrete variables, like continuous variables, are uh, quantitative variables. So for example, age, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, those are not qualitative variables, those are quantitative variables. The variables such as age or employment, uh, I'm sorry, those are quantitative variables. Employment, say like wage, so that's another quantitative variable there, so like wage. So those are quantitative variables. 
And similar to the variables we discussed before, like continuous and discrete variables, number of cars, the number of jobs you took, the number of years of schooling, those are quantitative variables. But there are some variables that are uh, not uh, directly measured numerically. Or, or like uh, if you look at a survey, there are some questions there that you answer using a yes or a no. So um, variables that cannot be measured numerically but are described only by attributes or qualities are called qualitative variables. And what we do in econometrics is we try to the best of our ability to quantify these qualitative variables in some way. So for example, say you find this uh, question in a survey and that you'd like to use it as a variable because it indicates whether the person was vaccinated or not. So the question in the survey went, was the person vaccinated against COVID-19? Of course, the response would be yes or no. So typically when we code it in a data set, if the person said yes to that question, and that was one observation, we code it as one. And if they said no, we code it as zero. And essentially that way of coding it is essentially how we do it in econometrics. We create what we call dummy variables. And dummy variables are useful tools, which we will explore more of as we go into our lectures in applied uh, econometrics. So those are the types of data sets and the types of variables we have in econometrics. In the next video, uh, we will formally start with discussing what uh, the econometric problems are. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.